the truth. Kevin Durant, you are not, nor will you ever be on the level of a LeBron James. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Kevin Durant because he is an excellent player, and I think he's going to go down in history, of course, as an All of Famer and one of the greatest that ever do it. I mean, he has offensive skills for somebody his size. I mean, nobody since to me, Dirt and Whiskey could do what what KD can do, and KD can do it better than Dirk, and that's saying a lot because Dirk is definitely a Hall of Fame player and a hell of a player. Uh, but the way KD can put the ball on the floor, the way he can play in the post, the way he can play on the perimeter, the way he can bring the ball up court, he's definitely improved on his defense, you know, things of that nature. But let's just get this straight first and foremost. Now, I know you were young when you was on OKC and, and uh, you can say all day long that, you know, that the team was young, but at the end of the day, you had Westbrook and you had Harden, two other MVP players. Although they hadn't won MVPs yet, but they had a lot of talent. So let's get that straight, you know. Let's get that straight. Uh, so you got beat four to one. You won that first game, and then next thing you know, LeBron James and company vanquish you four games to one. So then you had every opportunity. If you if you're as good as LeBron James, and people say, well, he's in the West. Kevin Durant is in the West. It, it was harder for him. It was harder for Kevin Durant. LeBron was in the East, but now LeBron has gone to the West. And you see what he did. Number one seed, finals, in the second year. First year he was hurt, and he had trash teammates. But I've been saying it for years, all LeBron need is one high-level teammate. If he can get, and it's proven throughout his career, if you look at LeBron James' entire career, if he was put with at least one high-level teammate, he made the finals each time. And two times he made the finals without having high-level teammates on two different occasions. So, on two different occasions, he made it to the finals without even high, having high-level teammates. And you know that was the first finals when he took that terrible team to play against San Antonio. And then the other time when Kyrie had left and it was only Kevin Love, and that team was not just really, and I won't consider Kevin Love a high power teammate, I'm sorry, but you can go back and watch my other videos about duos, the greatest duos in the history of NBA and things of that nature. I won't get into all that on this particular segment, but I did want to point that out. So also, you got to think about it. Kevin Durant was in the Western Conference. Okay. He made it to the Western Conference Finals yet again with Westbrook, with the Baca, with uh, Adams and other key players that was on that OKC team. So you had Golden State down three to one, Kevin Durant. I thought you called yourself KD Assassin. I thought you called yourself KD Assassin. If if you're an assassin, that means you're a killer, KD. If you're an assassin, that means you are a killer. So okay. If you have a team down three to one and you got other all-star teammates, how do you let another team come all the way back down from three to one to defeat you? See, you've done that. Steph Curry done that. And Kawhi Leonard has done that. LeBron James hasn't done that. LeBron James has come back down three to one. That is the difference. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. So, KD, you want to say your move is comparable to the same move that LeBron James did in going to Miami. First and foremost, like I said before, Chris Bosh is not a big three. Dwayne Wade was not even in his best years. The first two years, albeit yes, by that third year, Dwayne Wade was beat down. We all know it. We saw what happened in the fourth year there when they got beat down by San Antonio because LeBron James was trying to put the whole team on his back and Dwayne Wade's knees was gone and Bosh was basically giving you nothing. And you saw when LeBron left Cleveland, the next year Miami did not go to the playoffs. And I don't want to hear excuses about why. Because So like I said, Dwayne Wade, when you went when when LeBron left Miami and went back to Cleveland, Dwayne Wade was still on that team. They did not make the playoffs. So like I've been saying, you can see the impact of a LeBron James. So going back to what I was saying about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. You went to a team. You cannot compare what you did to the to the move that LeBron James made. And in hindsight, the move that LeBron James made is not even close to the move that, that Kevin Durant made after that. 
Because if you think about it, like I said, Chris Bosch, I mean, he's a great player. I don't want to take anything away from him. And indeed, of course, he he did a lot in Toronto, and so did Kevin Love in Minnesota. But if you really think about it, they were the number one scoring options. And I hate when idiots say that, well, LeBron didn't make teammates better. Uh, Kevin Love and Chris Bosch numbers got lower. No, he made the role players better, dum-dums. These people were already primary scorers on the team before. Of course, when you're on the team with LeBron, you're not the primary scorer anymore. On the team with LeBron and Wade, you're not going to be a primary scorer. Kevin Love on the team with Kyrie and LeBron, you're not going to be a primary scorer, so you got to learn how to fit the role. I hate when dum-dums don't even take perspective in. I'm tired of smooth brain idiots all across the internet saying these kind of things. So going back to the, to the assassin, the so-called self-proclaimed assassin, KD. Okay, KD, I don't want to take nothing from you. I mean, you hit some big shots, you hit a shot in LeBron James' face to win the game, but at the end of the day, you went and joined the team that you were down 3-1 to in the playoffs. So, if you want to make the same equivalency as what LeBron James did, that would be like when LeBron lost to Boston. When he did, I remember when LeBron pulled that jersey off. And that's when I was really starting to become a big LeBron James fan at the time. Because I was like, damn, if this guy ever had some help, it'll be over for the NBA. I'm like, man, look at this trash he playing with, but yet he taking his team deep into the playoffs and to the finals every year with scrubs. And then he going up against the likes of a Paul Pierce, the likes of a Ray Allen, a Rasheed Wallace, a Kevin Garnett, a Rajon Rondo. And then you look beside you and you got a booby. A booby. <laughs> a damn booby. Come on now. So then, Kevin Durant, you went and joined the team that had the best record of all time, and you act like you did something. And then, especially the second go-round against LeBron, that's what really killed me, when LeBron didn't even have Kyrie or anybody, bro. You act like you did something, Kevin Durant. So I'm really itching to see what you're going to do when you go against LeBron, if you can make it to the finals, if Oda Takumpu stay in Milwaukee, we'll see what that Eastern Conference landscape look like. I'm very interested to find out what that Eastern Conference landscape gonna look like. If you can even make it past that, KD. Cause Kyrie been known not to do so well without the likes of LeBron James. How y'all gonna share the basketball is the question. I see a lot of ISO ball in the future. And I'm going to get into the subject of Steve Nash and his coaching decision and, and, and some of those things in another video. But I still want to stay focused on this at hand as far as Kevin Durant is concerned. Kevin Durant, I'm, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. You're not on the level of a LeBron James. You never will be. You want to say your rings are better than LeBron James when they're not. Your rings, I'm not going to take away from them. You won the rings. You went to the team. Y'all created the best, probably the best team ever. I mean... With the skill of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, uh, Draymond Green, as well as yourself. I mean, hell of a team. And I don't want to take anything away from that. But we're going to see in the Eastern Conference when it's time for the Brooklyn Nets to see what you're going to do. Especially when a new team has to mesh. Because they got a talented young team. And I do believe in, uh, in Steve Nash. But at the end of the day, what I do want to let y'all know is... If you come up against the likes of an Anthony Davis and a LeBron James, boy, it's over with. You are not an assassin and you're not a killer. You better take, you better understand and bow down to the real one. Crown the king. And then LeBron, I'm going to have to go against the gauntlet of the Golden State Warriors, the Portland Trail Blazers, and all the other mighty competition that's in the West. But please believe it's going to work out just, just the way I plan and anticipate because what he said. Not one. Not two, not three. Y'all already know the scope. So anyway, this is B New. I'm saying right on to the real, death to the fakers. I'm coming back at you real soon with some other videos because there's some things that I saw in the NBA headlines that really caught my eye, and I gotta speak on it. So again, subscribe, like, share, start a movement. You know what I'm saying? Let's do this. Right on to the real, death to the fakers. I'm out.